Each drop of water is a potential source of life for our planet. Fresh water is used for drinking, washing, food production, industrial activities, and to sustain ecosystems. Considering its importance, it's startling to realize how little fresh water is available to us worldwide. Our fresh water supplies depend on various sources, such as rainwater, water stored in rivers, lakes and soil, treated wastewater, desalinated seawater, and groundwater. Though being invisible, this latter source is of tremendous importance. Groundwater represents by far the largest source of unfrozen freshwater on Earth. It is relatively easily and cheaply extracted. It is irreplaceable in areas where other freshwater sources are seasonally lacking. So groundwater may well be described as a hidden source of life. Groundwater is found in underground reservoirs or aquifers almost everywhere on the continents. Even in dry areas without rivers or lakes like the Sahara, groundwater can be found in these aquifers. Exploring, mapping and assessing the world's aquifers is vital for modern water management. It is also a huge and very costly task. However, in most countries, these activities, which were often started in the 1950s, are still far from being completed. The global water demand is rapidly growing due to the world's growing population. Obviously, this increasing demand is also reflected in the use of groundwater. This has often led to negative effects such as pollution and overexploitation. In some areas, groundwater levels are declining by meters per year. These are alarming rates especially since it's uncertain whether we will be able to regenerate our aquifers. The groundwater we use has come from far. Rain dropping from clouds onto the ground runs off into gullies and rivers. Patiently but surely, it finds its way into an aquifer. From there, groundwater discharges into rivers and lakes, and eventually into the ocean or directly to the atmosphere. It's in this long journey where dangers of pollution lie. Human activities like uncontrolled waste disposal and intensive application of agricultural inputs pollute water along its pathway. Banning or reducing such pollution sources will protect groundwater quality. Nature itself may have a negative impact on the use of groundwater too by slowly dissolving minerals present in the aquifer along its flow path. We should avoid over-exploiting the more shallow aquifers, which mostly contain young groundwater. Otherwise, we risk losing these resources, leaving us only the deeper aquifers with less accessible, older, and possibly poor quality water. Already, good quality fresh water is scarce in many parts of the world. With an ever-growing need for fresh water, it is crucial to learn more about the specific risks and opportunities related to groundwater. The people on our planet are counting on it. Our world, our planet, is changing. Every day we see or hear some proof of that in the news or in our own living environment. This global change also has an impact on our groundwater. As the Earth slowly warms, sea levels are expected to rise 
and seawater may leak into aquifers in coastal areas and deltas worldwide, threatening freshwater ground resources with salinization. Extraction of fresh groundwater in these regions strongly enhances this process. Given the recent estimate that in the year 2025, no less than 75% of the world's population will live in coastal areas and deltas, the worldwide challenge is evident. Climate change is expected to result in different rain patterns and quantities which in some areas may have major consequences for crop production. We will have to adapt to these changing conditions. More rainfall doesn't necessarily cause a problem. However, in many areas where rain-fed agriculture is currently common practice, droughts may result in a mismatch between the water demand of crops and the water provided by rain. To prevent loss of harvests, this mismatch needs to be compensated artificially by irrigation for example, by using groundwater. But global change is not just about climate change. Human behavior also has its impact. It's about an increasing world population with a hopefully improving living standard. Global consumption increases and stresses natural resources like groundwater. People are migrating to mega cities to find better opportunities. In overpopulated areas, groundwater is threatened almost by definition. For instance, in parts of the densely populated eastern Chinese plains, groundwater levels have dropped no less than 50 meters over the last few decades. In Mexico City, Groundwater level decline has caused and still causes land subsidence, resulting in widespread damage to houses and infrastructure. In some areas of Yemen, intensive exploitation of groundwater has triggered the needs for periodic deepening of wells, which has ruined the rural economies and made groundwater unaffordable for poor farmers. Stopping these negative consequences of current intensive groundwater use and fostering future groundwater needs pose a formidable global challenge indeed. The global challenges at hand force us to look for new solutions, for new perspectives. Obtaining knowledge of and awareness on the impact of climate change and human behavior on groundwater helps us to face these challenges and guide us towards a more sustainable future. Because this is where the solutions lie. Sustainability. Looking at what our planet has to offer, the importance of sustainability can be found everywhere where nature works its wonders. From majestic plains to microscopic environments, the ingenuity and interdependency of it all leads to sustainable ecosystems. But in respect to water, mankind appears not to be learning nature's lessons. Believe it or not, this arid region was once a beautiful lake where fishermen earned a good living. The former Soviet Union decided to divert the water of two main rivers draining into the Aral Sea to irrigate farmland. Large volumes of grains and cotton were produced in these farmlands, securing food availability and providing economic stimulants to the area. However, with this diversion, the lake was robbed of its water supplies. The Aral Sea was left dry, its ecosystems and economy destroyed, affecting, in particular, the fishermen who depended upon it. To increase their agricultural area, the Dutch have drained the low-lying peatlands in the western part of the country for centuries. 
Their polders provide agricultural outputs for a long period contributing to Holland's development. However, these benefits eventually did have a negative environmental and social impact. With groundwater at an historic low, peat oxidation and clay consolidation resulted in large-scale land subsidence. Currently, a large extent of the Dutch land surface is under sea level, and to keep feet dry, continuous pumping is essential. This causes another environmental consequence, seawater intrusion. In a world where economic and population growth knock on the same doors at the same time, sustainability is as big a necessity as it is a challenge. When it comes to groundwater, sustainability simply means ensuring that no more groundwater goes out than comes in over the long term. Easier said than done. Libya extracts five times more groundwater out of its aquifers than is gained by rainwater infiltration. This is unsustainable. But what if the people have no alternative? Large-scale groundwater pumping causes widespread salinization in coastal areas of Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Orissa, Kerala. Currently, various solutions are being studied. In the Netherlands, in around 400,000 locations, soil and groundwater are contaminated due to past human activities. Over 25% of these locations need to be remediated before 2030. Estimated cost, 12 billion euros. Currently, new legislation should prevent further contamination and protect soil and groundwater quality. Economic development depends upon availability of fresh water. The less groundwater a region has, and the more it depends on groundwater for food production and economic development, the higher the risk for overexploitation. Choices on how to manage groundwater should obviously be based on a thorough knowledge and understanding of groundwater systems. Continuous inventory and monitoring of our groundwater systems provides us the necessary data and information to make such important decisions. Considering the challenges the world is facing concerning water management and groundwater in particular, we may conclude that the following actions are important steps in the right direction. Managing groundwater instead of overexploitation. Improving knowledge and understanding of regional groundwater systems and its uses. Policies, legislation and action plans should result in equitable and sustainable groundwater use and in groundwater protection and conservation. And last but not least, ongoing monitoring and evaluation to provide means to continuously optimize groundwater management. The hydrological cycle and people's intervention in this cycle make water flow. Flowing water does not stop at private land perimeters, nor at political and administrative boundaries. Groundwater is no exception to this. At least 145 countries worldwide share one or more aquifers with their neighbors. These are called transboundary aquifers. Groundwater interventions in such aquifers at one side of the border may result in groundwater changes on the other side. The importance of having sufficient quantity and proper quality of groundwater for people on both sides of the border raises issues of groundwater ownership and sharing. Groundwater-related tensions occur when the resource is scarce. Tensions rise even more easily when access and control over the resource are inequitably distributed over the various users. The ongoing civil conflict in parts of northern Kenya and Uganda is illustrative. Droughts in this arid region have diminished the groundwater availability dramatically in the last decade. Various groups compete over the scarce resources. 
It has triggered outbreaks of violence between them. Internationally, Israel, Jordan and the Palestine Authority are debating the management of scarce water resources. Water recharge areas on the West Bank are of vital importance for all parties concerned. Fortunately, cases where people find cooperative solutions for sharing scarce groundwater resources outnumber the cases of disputes and conflicts. Equitable water sharing has been internalized and practiced in many societies and cultures. For example, the Islamic Quran gives advice and rules on how to deal with scarce water resources. In Gujarat, India, groundwater trading developed between farmers who still have access to groundwater and those left waterless after a dramatic decline in groundwater. Instead of starting a conflict, people chose a mechanism of cooperation to deal with the scarcity. Since the late 1990s, the realization that many aquifers cross international boundaries has raised interest in the issue of transboundary aquifer management. International and regional organizations have forged cooperation between countries on transboundary aquifers, usually starting with inventories of these aquifers. Initiatives such as UNESCO's Program on Internationally Shared Aquifer Resource Management, or ISARM, strongly support this new development. Operational transboundary aquifer management needs favorable conditions. This includes building awareness among users, scientists, water managers, policy makers and politicians. Secondly, diagnostic analysis of shared aquifers helps decide whether or not there's sufficient reason and motivation for developing management plans. The third requirement is an adequate institutional framework covering all stakes and stakeholders, tailored to the area-specific settings. Finally, an enabling environment with sufficient political support and funding. Collecting, analyzing, and especially sharing of data, information, and knowledge are of paramount importance in all these steps in the evolution of transboundary aquifer management. We've only just begun. <laughs>